Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mac Kepke. I'm the general manager of the Americas for GeoSlam. Uh, we're happy to be presenting this afternoon with our partners, Veladon LiDAR. This afternoon, we're going to be talking about reality capture using LiDAR. GeoSlam has been working with Velodyne for a number of years to create uh, world-class and world-leading handheld data capture technology, such as the Zeb Horizon that I have here in my hand. GeoSlam pioneered the use of LiDAR SLAM algorithms and was the first supplier of handheld LiDAR SLAM um, units. Our products and our innovations are driven by our customers. So while our customers are using these uh, systems in kind of new and different and unique ways, we are also seeking out customers that are using our new customers that have not been experienced to our technology that want to use it in new and different and exciting ways. So first, really what was the problem? And I know most of this show as we're walking around, we're seeing the use of LiDAR and things like autonomous vehicles and robotics, but there was a very unique problem that needed to be solved. Capturing geospatial data in interior or underground or otherwise other very difficult conditions was really too hard to do with traditional scanning equipment. And we'll get to that in a moment. However, the survey industry, they really wanted accuracy. So static scanners, of course, give you the accuracy, but complex environments make it very, very difficult to actually use that data, capture that data in sort of any efficient manner. So in this example, um, we'll just take one floor of a hotel. You'll see multiple different rooms. In each one of these rooms, using a static scanner, you'd have to set up your system, capture multiple scans per room, and then move that system to another room, move it around multiple times, do another set of scans, and continue to move it and move it and move it. You couldn't just go into one room and scan one time because you'd have shadows. You would have uh, the beds, for example. Those would hide things and features that might be behind uh, the scanner itself. So a ho just one floor of a small hotel could take you a week to scan, not to mention all of the time it would take to go and process all of that data together afterwards. Stitching all that data together is very, very time consuming. So from that, GeoSlam was born. Now, just for a matter of context, for those who aren't familiar, this is the traditional way. This is what we would call a static scanner or a total station. The system sits the system here sits on top of a tripod. It's set up in one location. The system moves in 360 degrees, captures all the information around it. Then it's picked up, moved across over here, set down, scans again, et cetera, et cetera. So as you can imagine, on a very large project or in an indoor space where you might have a lot of shadows because there's objects in the way, you could be looking at tens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of scans to accomplish a full 3D model of a particular location. Now, what is SLAM? Of course, it's in the name of our company. It's a term you might have heard from other providers as well. A little bit of background. Back in the 1980s, robotics engineers, you know, kind of on, on automated uh, robotics version 1.0, we can say, um, they had a problem. They're trying to move robots around factory floors, but they're trying to make sure that they're not hitting walls, they're not hitting people, and the robots aren't running into each other. But because you're indoors, you can't use traditional um, locating technology. GPS was still in its infancy, and of course, that doesn't work indoors. So the engineers realized if they could design an algorithm that could concurrently map and navigate through that space, they could solve that problem. And from that, SLAM, or Simultaneous Localization and Mapping, was born. Now, SLAM, <coughs> SLAM algorithms are only as good as the raw data that is input into them. And as GeoSLAM's products begin to, to develop, um, using the Velodyne Puck system basically became the natural choice for us. It allowed us to create a line of products that had a much further range, um, up to 100 meters, as you know, but it doesn't add a lot of additional weight to our systems. Again, they're designed to be handheld, so you don't want a customer having to carry a system that weighs 10 pounds around in their hand all day long. It's not realistic, you get fatigued. So using the Velodyne Puck, we were able to create the Zeb Horizon, which is a system you see here in my hand. 
It's a fully mobile, lightweight, very flexible system that has no need for a tripod. Its unique 360 degree rotating head allows you to extend the range that you see from the Velodyne puck all around in a vertical plane. That gives you a broader field of view than you would get from other competing uh, systems in the market. And the system is also designed to be very user friendly. It's industrial grade technology in a consumer friendly format. You don't need specialist training. Within five minutes, you can pick up a device, be walking around and scanning data. Building onto the Zeb Horizon, we've created a system called Clip and Go. The Clip and, Clip and Go technology allows really incredible flexibility. You're enabled to use this same Zeb Horizon system, both handheld, deployed onto a UAV, or onto a vehicle mount, all within a matter of seconds. This has enabled us to create our next and latest product, just launched in September, called the Zeb Discovery. The Zeb Discovery combines the same Zeb Horizon system that I have here, alongside a 360 degree high, uh, ultra high definition camera that has a GNSS receiver on top to actually locate yourself. All of that's combined into a really lightweight, easy to use backpack system. This has enabled uh, data collection for a number of industries and was actually born as a request from some of our urban mapping customers. They didn't want to be able to have to walk around holding the system in their hand. They wanted something that was hands-free that would allow them to capture data in a very fast manner. And as you'll see in both of these images, it is truly hands-free. So you don't have to be looking at a tablet or looking at a device to make sure that what's being captured is actually the data uh, that you need. You are Again, able to look in front of you, able to do object avoidance, AKA don't walk into other people, don't trip off the curb. And in just five minutes wearing one of these devices, in this particular example, we were able to capture the whole downtown city center of Nottingham, England. Again, this is five minutes of walking. You have a fully high accuracy point cloud that is colorized with 360 degree panoramic images for additional context. A couple of examples. Uh, the blue line represents the trajectory. The bottom are images of visualization. Looking at building fronts. In this example, we're looking at the entire uh, front of a particular block in Nottingham. Again, not only do you have dimensionally accurate, uh, a dimensionally accurate point cloud, you also have colorized point cloud data from the imagery that has gone into the system, as well as the 360 degree panoramic images for additional context. So by now, you're probably asking yourself, okay, we've heard about SLAM, what makes GeoSLAM different? So to start, we come from one of the longest legacies of SLAM technology. The company history dates back to 1999, and we released our first handheld SLAM product back in 2013 which allows you to connect and collect that data using the most powerful SLAM algorithm commercially available for handheld devices. We have a very diverse user set. However, for the purposes of today, we're gonna focus on about uh, five or six of them. We have customers that are using our technology in very, very harsh environments, underground, uh, in caves, in mines. Um, we have customers that are mounting them on UAV for aerial collection. And then, of course, indoors. In fact, we have customers that will do every single one of those collections within an hour. Both underground mines, um, vertical uh, buildings on the surface, as well as aerial survey using a UAV, and stitch all of that data together. A couple of examples. Uh, within kind of the survey and real estate market, these customers are using our equipment to uh, with ultra-fast scanning capability to create inventory uh, databases as well as floor plans, both in 2D as well as 3D if required. Our mining customers are creating high accuracy mapping of their underground mines or caves. Um, this has really uh, been able to accelerate the process of understanding the progress of underground mining. So traditionally, you've been taking a static scanner, you've been putting ground control in, You've been capturing a scan, moving the equipment, capturing the scan again, and doing that, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is, when you do that with a static scanner, you have to shut the mine down. 
that's costing some customers millions of dollars a day in lost productivity. With our equipment, you're able to walk it in 20 minutes, get an updated scan, and have an updated point cloud of everything that you've, been, that you've just seen. Additionally, GeoSlam just launched our volumes software, which enables you to use the same equipment, scan your vertical stockpiles that you might have, uh, and give yourself a complete high accuracy um, asset inventory of the ore that you may have that you've already extracted from the mine that sits on the surface ready to be produced. In facilities and asset management, see if I can get this video to play here. Our customers are using our systems to create condition reports and asset identification. On the left, you'll see a model that was created from a scan using the Zeb Horizon system. And on the right, you'll see a seven story parking garage that was captured in a matter of a couple of hours. If you wanted to do this with a static scanner, you might be looking at a week's worth of work. Our architecture, engineering, and construction customers are using our systems to create building information models, uh, both for buildings that are under construction as well as for uh, as built, as it's called in the industry. BIM models are very popular in the European Union, and they're very much increasing in popularity here in the United States. In construction, progress monitoring is a huge utilization of our technology, um, especially for those that are writing the checks. So if you are financing a construction project and you're receiving a bill, you want to verify that that work has actually been done before you're, you're making that progress payment. Our systems allow you to verify uh, what has been built against plans very, very quickly and easily. Additionally, for engineers, they get the same uh, benefit. They're able to look at the as-built versus the plans to determine if there's anything off and if therefore they need to go on site to uh, make any remediation or um, alternative plans. On the conservation side, we have uh, many forestry customers, for example, that are use using the systems for forestry inventory um, and management, determining, for example, tree types as well as profile views, as you'll see here. Um, for tree height as well as diameter. Our historical societies are using our equipment to capture buildings, verifying the state that they're in, determining progress on preservation or if the buildings do require preservation and condition management. For security and defense, in the security field, our systems are being used for preactive planning and emergency response. Some studies recently have shown that if you have a, a a known building floor plan, it actually demonstrates a reduction of about 25% in response times. So having this information is helping keep our schools and other public, safe, public spaces safe. On the side of uh, law enforcement, the systems are being used and deployed in the field for accident reconstruction or um, site, uh, site capturing. So if you have a, a crime scene, for example, you need to understand where everything in that room was at any given moment or at the time that the crime scene was discovered, you're able to capture that in 3D with relevant um, uh, photographic evidence to be able to uh, use all that information, for example, in the court of law. On education, our systems have been used for both virtual reality and augmented reality. In this particular case, uh, a university went and captured an underground tunnel from World War II in northern France. That data was brought back and created a fully immersive experience for students in the United States. So you, they can experience what tunnel warfare was like. Additionally, our systems have been featured on National Geographic and most recently the Discovery Channel, helping capture data for our, um, very difficult to capture locations. Again, caves, mines, tunnels, um, as well as UAV aerial surveys for historical sites. And then of course, Everyone's favorite tourism board has to capture their most iconic sites. And in this case, we actually captured people taking selfies of themselves um, in front of the Welcome to Las Vegas sign. So a bit more about GeoSlam. Um, this is just a sampling of the customers that are using our technology today. You'll see some of the largest engineering, mining, and construction firms in the world that are on this slide. Our headquarters is based in the United Kingdom. We operate with nine global offices. We have approximately 77 distributors in 53 different countries in the world. And with that, I leave you. Um, if you'd like to know more, 
please visit our website at geoslam.com. Or if you're interested, please come see me afterwards, and I'd be happy for any uh, question and answers if needed. Thank you.